but it's the whole kind of servant leadership idea. Like my job is to make you comfortable and make you come back. That's what I'm supposed to do. I have to figure out how will I make you comfortable and make you come back. In some, you know, 5% of the cases, it's probably really challenging somebody. In 95% of the cases, it's probably getting to know somebody and making that person think, hey, I'm gonna go to Mike's group. Mike is nice, Mike cares about me. Mike asks me how I'm doing when I come in in the morning. Am I sore? How do I feel? I go, again, you guys didn't get a chance, but all I do with our girls group is walk around. How's your hip? How's your shoulder? How do you feel? How sore are you based on Monday? And they know that I give a shit. If you ask any of them, they would all be like, Mike really cares about us and he cares that we're all healthy. Because I know I can get them better. Better is easy, healthy, not so easy. The big thing, be a bucket filler. Fill empty buckets, don't overfill full buckets. So like you were saying, if you got that person who's doing eight different classes a week and they're going to yoga and they're doing a Pilates, you think, what do they need? Strength, probably, right? If you've got somebody who's a runner and I know this person runs three or four or five times a week, three or four or five, six miles, what do I want them to do? I want them doing really high intensity stuff on the bike because I wanna fill the empty bucket. I don't wanna fill the full bucket. I don't want them to get on the bike and say, oh, they're gonna like, oh, I'm gonna ride for a half hour on the bike. I'm like, no, I'd really like you to do 10 minutes of really hard interval stuff because I wanna fill the empty bucket. I don't wanna fill the full bucket. Because again, what we do, our human nature is to keep filling the full bucket. Find something that we're good at and just keep doing that. And in generally in exercise, that's keep doing that till we're hurt. And then take only as much time off as we need to try to get better and then repeat. The initial Kabbalah study was one where they compared four times 30 seconds to 120 minutes of steady state. So the peop, one group did four times 30 seconds, but what they did was they did four wind gates. If you've ever had the pleasure of doing a wind gate, it's 30 seconds absolutely as fast as you can possibly go. It is horrible. Sometimes people will throw up after one wind gate. At the end of the 30 seconds, they'll immediately get off the bike and puke. Because the instruction there is as hard as you possibly can go for as long as you can possibly go, and I'm gonna cheerlead you the whole time, like, come on, come on, come on, go, 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 go. They did that, they got people in the study to do it four times, which is pretty unimaginable that they found people that were that masochistic that they would actually do. I mean, I've seen, I've seen groups do two wind gates. I've never seen anybody try to do four, but they did it, and they did it consistently for a long enough time. The interesting thing, though, was that they showed that four times 30 seconds had equal to or better benefits on VO2 max than 120 minutes. So steady state aerobic exercise was literally defeated and or tied by two minutes of high intensity exercise. Now the two minutes of high intensity exercise was actually done over the course of 20 minutes because they were taking four to five minutes rest in between. But still, the difference is when you look at people and say, hey, you know, you can either exercise for 120 minutes or two. Anybody taken 120? Right? Some people would, but the average person who's in your class, if you said, hey, we've got two options today. One is that you ride the Airdyne for two hours, and the other is that you ride the Airdyne for two minutes. No one is saying, oh, I've got two hours today that I, you know, I would love my ass to be raw from <laughs> sitting on that thing for two hours. So yeah, I'll go with the two hours. I'll go with the 120 minutes. What's, you know, what do you think the pace should be? No one, like that's not gonna happen. So like we said, for me, you wanna build work capacity, you invert the pyramid. The old way of building work capacity was you built volume out in the bottom. So people would say, you know, uh, you know I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a lot of, you know, a lot of slower running. I look at it as the exact opposite. I might say to somebody, you know, we're gonna do two 30 second intervals this week. And then next week we're gonna do three. And then the third week we're gonna do four. The fifth week we're gonna do Five, we're gonna literally, we're gonna build from the bottom up and make it really easy because if we do that, then we get people, they're not gonna get injured. The old way of building a base, like, oh, you gotta build an aerobic base, you've gotta accumulate a lot of time. That's why people get hurt because we start to, we substitute duration for intensity in the beginning. What we'd rather do here probably is just say, hey, we're gonna go moderate intensity and we're gonna just keep blocking moderate intensity on top of itself. This is what we do with our athletes all the time. And everybody gets in really good shape and it's never hard. Like people always think, oh, that was a little harder than last week, but it wasn't hard. Cause it never is that much harder than last week. We're always thinking, you know, 
Harder is one more minute of exertion potentially than you did a week before, which most, you know, from an athletic standpoint, most people handle that really easily. 